Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for people and animals. And this is Tristan Corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Hi, Danny. So, as you can see, we have the light on, so we have a lovely yellow glow, even though it's 9 in the morning and it's pouring rain. Luckily, it is about 75 degrees, which is a lot better than the 58 it was the other day. I, I can't take this cold weather. I just can't stand it and I feel like the summer hasn't even come because I've been so busy and now we're getting these colder days here and there I can't ugh. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in New Jersey that's all I have to say because to me New Jersey feels like Florida as much as my mom and my sister think it's cold there it's 10 degrees warmer than here which is a lot and my poor friends in New Hampshire they've already gone down below like 35 at night so it's really cold two hours north of here and I'm sure in other parts of the country so today we're late getting started because i had to attend to a pretty significant shoulder problem i incurred yesterday working with a particular client dog who weighs probably 50 to 60 pounds and he is typical of many dogs that live in the world and that i often see later in their lives because the way he was behaving is creating a lot of problems in his body that will manifest later if not in a way now that his people are really aware of and he's a foster kid he's not going to stay with these people and um, so what I want to talk about today is balance balance in your dog is so important my boy is balancing right here trying to stay on my lap <laughs> and I have shorts on so he doesn't have a good grip on any fabric so he's balancing on my thighs which is akin to balancing on a pretty firm cushion because we do walk two miles every day. But still, it takes some challenge from his tummy muscles here to get that balance. And he's activating his hammies back here, plus his quads as I rock him a little bit, trying to hold his balance on my legs, which are a little more unsteady than the floor. And actually, if you have a dog that needs some strength at his hind end, just doing what I'm doing with Tristan here, rocking him a little bit this way and this way, can actually improve his balance behind and improve his muscles behind. And that's a really good exercise to do with your DM dogs as well, just to get them maintaining whatever muscles they have, just little balance challenges gently like this, so that he has to activate those muscles and get them firing. And it can actually really improve their gait um, for DM dogs and other dogs with neurologic problems and disc problems. And that is typical for a lot of rehab that you do after um, a number of surgeries, ACL and back surgery and hind end surgery and things like that. So one of the things that we say in T-Touch, which I think is profoundly important regarding balance, is that a dog that is in physical balance is in emotional balance. And if you ever see a dog that is not in emotional balance, straining at the end of their leash, clawing and not going anywhere, jumping, leaping, barking, they are not in physical balance. And what's fascinating to me is like with this youngster I had yesterday, who's probably two, he literally can't stand on his own four feet and hold still for even 15 seconds. I mean, he is so out of balance. Now he has numerous physical problems going on. He has some patella problems. He has, after an x-ray, been discovered that he's got like an L-shaped femur on both legs and also a bend in his tibia. So in his hind leg bones, I don't know if you can see this on Tristan, this bone here and this bone here actually are L-shaped. When you look at him from the side, he's got the straightest leg. It's like dead straight, like two by four straight. He has no bend in his hock, like little Tristan here. See how he's got a little bend back there under his fuzz buns? He can fold right up. This dog can't do that. He often lays in what we call a sploot with his legs out behind him like this, because he can't collapse his joints very well to lay like in a sphinx pose. So one of the things that you can do if you have a dog that's out of balance or if you have a puppy or if you have a new rescue is to help that dog learn to stand in physical balance. And I find it almost impossible to do this without a T-touch harness because the harness is gonna allow freedom in the shoulders and not impinge the dog in that way. It comes back and comes just around here in an H so that the shoulder is completely free. It's V-shaped on the neck so that the dog can't strangle himself leaning into it. It comes quite far down on the chest actually. 
and then it's also quite a long age where it comes back to the dog on here so that you can hold the dog here or on the two sides and even with this giant strong dog and he does what um, I've come to call lack of sense of self-preservation. He body slams like into you, into the furniture because A, he's excited, but B, he can't find the balance and he's having intermittent pain in his back and his hind legs that makes him not really jumpy, but more movie trying to find a comfortable place because he can't find a comfortable place. So to get that dog to be more comfortable, I had to get him by the harness here and just pull him like this to, to try to get him to not lean on me and to find his balance and then let him find that place and take my hands off of him. Now he is so good at relying on anything to find his balance besides himself that his uh, person was squatting on the floor next to him and the dog would be leaning his whole shoulder and 45 pounds to 60 pounds plus his pressure onto the guy's knee to try to hold himself up or the guy would be holding him by the leash up here and the dog would be kind of pulling back to get that tension on the leash so that he could balance and the fellow asked an absolutely good question can i use treats to help teach him to do this and I said, well, imagine yourself in a yoga class for the first time trying to balance in tree pose. So to do that, you have your foot from one leg up on your thigh of the other leg with your knee turned out and your arms are up in the air like this. And I said, if somebody offered you a piece of chocolate while you were trying to do that, is that going to help? It's just going to distract you and make you fall even more because balance is about going inward finding that balance within yourself. And so the treats aren't gonna help the dog, but that's a really valid question. And believe me, brave guy for asking, because a lot of people would be wondering the same thing. If I give him treats, will he hold still? And it's not about holding still, it's about being in balance because the dog can't hold still because he's out of balance. So we had to give him a better sense of himself. I had to improvise a crazy wrap um, you know, I had him in just the full body wrap around the chest, around the middle, and he was just out of balance so badly. His hind end was not connected to his body. So I did a twist here after once around his chest, brought it under and around his hind legs and did a couple of knots here and there to avoid the business under here. And that was helpful, but also he had no sense of his hind end. So it was somewhat irritating. To, well, not irritating, more like annoying to him. And he was kind of like, I don't really like this because he was feeling things he wasn't used to feeling. So one of the things he did, which uh, we all know about fight or flight response, which is the sympathetic nervous system. And if you've listened to me for any length of time, you understand the parasympathetic or peaceful part of your nervous system, which is for rest, digest. So there are five things that dogs or horses or humans do when they're in that sympathetic state. There's fight, flight, freeze, faint, and full around. I've seen a couple of dogs faint. I've seen a horse faint. Um, yes, they can do it when they're highly stressed. They just collapse. Fooling around is something we see in a lot of like one and two year old Labrador and Golden Retriever puppies. They have a lot of energy. They're moving, moving, moving. They've got that constantly wagging tail. So fooling around in this dog's case, which is really typical, manifests as flipping over on his back, pushing hard with his back feet, and then squiggling side to side while his tail's going a thousand miles an hour wagging. So he, that's his coping mechanism. This is not a bad thing, but it's how he is handling the extra stress of having to stand in balance and feel his hind legs, which was so difficult for him. And so we just keep giving him a chance to squiggle a little bit and then asking him and asking him. And it probably took 15 minutes, not more than 20, before he could stand still for a little bit, 10, 15 seconds, without leaning on anyone. And part of that key was um, holding his tail here a little bit to stop the wagging and bring him some awareness so that he would slowly wag instead of this frantic thing. And I think some of that frantic wagging is like trying to use your tail as a rudder to find where you are in space. So when he's doing a slow, purposeful wag, he's getting a much better sense of his body. So we got him standing on four feet, holding still with one person on one side, me on the other side, and then a person sitting in the chair blocking him in front so he couldn't come forward very much. And he was okay. And then of course I was able to do some cranial work on his uh, really uh, achy patellas and his back. 
And then after that, we took him outside to work in the labyrinth and we had another amazing couple of things come up. First of all, we put him in the labyrinth and he's been practicing the labyrinth quite a bit. And for those who don't know, it's like a little maze where you go like in a serpentine that we use in T-Touch to train animals. And one of the things that it does, well, not to train, to help them think really is what it does. And one of the things it does is activate the right and left side of the brain, which is the intuitive side and the logical side simultaneously and equally. So the animals really think when they're in the labyrinth. And I've seen this even with bunnies or ferrets. So don't think just because you have a bunny in the house or a ferret that you can't use T-Touch in labyrinths because it works great. And plus, if you have a ferret, you can really make a little labyrinth out of um, taped together toilet paper tubes or wrapping paper tubes or something like that. So anyway, um, we had the dog out there and he was stopping with all four feet on the ground with the leash slack. I talked talk to the people a lot last time they were here about having him stop with the leash loose so that he had release when he was stopped. A lot of people pull on the leash and when the dog stops, they're still pulling. The reward, quote unquote, I don't really like that word, but the, what you do when they do stop is release the leash so that there's no more pressure on the dog. And he's like, oh, that's comfortable. And then he can really feel his body. So this guy was stopping, but he had his back legs, what we call camped out in the horse world. So his back legs were literally behind his body like that far. See the balance this boy has? He can balance on his front piggies. So I said to the people, let's try to ask him to stop more in balance. So first we were having him stop like with two front legs like this and his back legs under him. And then we, you know, and we do this with horses all the time. You know, they grade you in dressage on your ability to stop squarely when you come down the center line. And there are good reasons for that. This isn't insane <laughs> um, ideas. You know, it comes from the military background, but if your horse can stand squarely, comfortably, he's in balance. And that is a reflection of the quality of training you put into that horse. And I am proud to say that with my Morgan that cost, you know, at the time $8,000 and I trained him myself, I got twice tens on his halts and he was not a very balanced horse. He was very long in the back. Uh, he was kind of built like a German Shepherd, um, which is great for dressage, not great for health and longevity. But I had that horse stopping with his hind end under him and absolutely square. And you can do the same with your dogs. So we had him stopping with his legs like mid, mid stride. And then we would ask him to come forward just one step, one step, which is great for his patience. Um, as well because he's a very impulsive young guy but he really wants to please he does a lot of tricks I taught him a couple of tricks I learned thanks to Karen Tyndall in my dazzle dogs class and uh, he learned these right away like I told to the guy you know you should really whoever gets this dog um, tell them to find Karen and do dog dancing with them and I guess a lot of pit rescue people around the Boston area have been interested in him he's a lovely dog really he'll be great for somebody who wants to work with a dog but we eventually got him stopping with his hind legs under him and we didn't even have a wand because he wanted to play with it so much. So we had him just with a little cue from the person just coming behind him with one leg a little bit stepping up or even better pulling the dog forward a couple of steps with his hind ends under him until he could stop squarely. And this took five minutes or less and the dog was able to stand squarely quietly on a loose leash with his four legs underneath of him. As we say in the horse world, a leg in each corner. And this is critical for our dogs and our horses and even our cats. I have worked with some cats with this um, after a stroke and they have no idea what's going on in the back end. And you know, I put a tiny T-touch harness on them and treat them just like I would a dog working in a labyrinth shape in my office here without even anything on the floor other than the lines in my rug and have gotten those kitties to become more aware of their hind end while they're wearing a wrap and just asking them to step in a little u-shaped turn using their hind legs like this instead of pivot turn <laughs> so um, balance so critical for our dogs and after that we were able to let the guy off his leash and run around and you know he explored the whole yard which is great because any dog that's big who wants to pee around my fence and tell the predators and things around this woods area behind me to, to stay out of my fence the more happy i am so we let him do that he had a great time he came back 
quietly. The guys hardly ever let him off the leash because he is a rescue and he's in foster care and he's pretty nervous about losing him because he's enthusiastic and you know, you don't know if he's coming back, but we have a big fence yard. So he came back to the guy, we put him back in the labyrinth and he was even better after he had that little mental break. So balance is so important for your dogs and for your horses and for you. In fact, um, you know, I go, I used to have osteoporosis and it's gotten so much better. I don't even have it anymore. But one of the things that the new doctor asked me was, do you practice balance regularly? I'm like, yes, I teach yoga. So of course, every Monday I'm balancing. But he, <clears throat> he said, well, you know, we really recommend practicing some balance every day. So even for people, and this is hard, if your balance isn't good, stand by the kitchen sink so that you can have your hands ready to go down but you can also lift them up. And this is a huge controversy in yoga. You know, is the best way to practice balance standing in the middle of the room with nothing around you and just holding it as long as you can and allowing yourself to fall? Or as one of my yoga teachers taught me, you can't, um, if you, like for downward dog, a lot of people, that's when you're kind of on your hands down and your legs behind you and your legs are straight and your heels are supposed to be on the ground. If you have tight hamstrings or tight calves or tight feet, you can't do that. And she said, you can't ever get the sensation of what it's gonna be like with your heels on the ground if they're straining. So put something under it, like a yoga blanket, so that you can kind of adjust it to get the support. And she said the same thing about balance, which has been super helpful to my students, so I know this works, which is to stand near a wall so that you have that mental, like I can catch myself feeling, and do your pose and plenty of them you can do with just a toe touching the ground here, you know, like when you lift your leg in front of you, just have your toe near the ground to stop you from falling and have your hand out to stop you from falling because sometimes just that little touch can get you re-integrated um, in your body so that you can improve your balance. So the support of the wall and the physical structures around you and even knowing that you can put your foot down at any time in some of these easier poses, uh, really helps improve your balance. And balance is important to us too, especially when we age, it helps prevent falls. So I highly recommend trying to stand on one foot many times throughout the day with shoes, without shoes. Um, it may save your life one day in the shower if you slip on the soap. So the same is true for our dogs. And remember that key point that when they are in physical balance, they are in emotional balance. And emotional balance is required for them to be able to learn and to think and to understand what we're asking them to do. And also to just make them more pleasant to be with. I mean, you know, to be with a dog that's not in physical balance is painful to people's shoulders, legs, and backs. <laughs> and so it does behoove you to encourage your dog, especially if he's a big guy, to stand on his own four feet and be calm and balanced. And this is critical for a lot of rescues. They can't do this. They have had to literally run for their lives when they were stray um, or in a shelter or in a bad house situation. So really, really balance is so important for your dog. And again, even if you've got a three pound Yorkie, just sit him on a pillow and rock him side to side, front to back. And as I'm rocking Tristan, initially this leg was a little like, ooh, 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 and now, He's got the rhythm and that leg isn't twitching at all. And I can just feel him. See, he's re-squaring himself behind so that he's better balanced so he can do this. And because I practice balance with him a lot, notice how calm he is while I'm doing this. If I had tried to do this with that poor guy yesterday who couldn't even stand still, it would have really unnerved him and he would have been upside down on his back fooling around again. So maybe in three weeks, he'll be able to do this once he learns how to balance and he has the strength and the sense in his body of a leg in each corner. So that's our talk today about balance in your dogs and your cats and your horses and yourselves. <laughs> Very important. And that goes for horses too. I know um, plenty of classes I've been in for T-Touch. We've had horses with uh, patellas that subluck, specs in their stifle, they've got a problem back here, a little hitch in their get along. And for them to stand in balance is really difficult. And so they become somewhat reactive horses, kind of shying at things you don't understand, usually at the turns at the far end of the arena. Um, and that's because they haven't got their balance and they're falling on their forehand and they get nervous and they squirt forward. So balance, so important for dogs and horses and people.
thanks for joining us today. Sorry we were so late. And we will be back again, what's tomorrow, Friday, uh, for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. See you then. Have a great day, everybody.